Hello there, folks. My name is Darren Sutton. Glad to have you back joining us for Perfect Game Weekly. And this is kind of a buzz kind of year around the sport. Despite what went on in 2020, it's 2021. And high school and college baseball is rolling out and spring training is opening. Now, we all go through different phases of enjoyment with spring training. For me, as a ball player's kid for a decade and a half, it was dad going to work and meeting major leaguers. As a big league announcer for about that same amount of time, it was getting to know the team and what the future held. Now it's totally different, and that's the focus of this show. We're going to find out those who have a chance to break through this year and make a big impact on teams, those who were fresh PG alumni. Look, when you have a database and an alumni group of nearly 1,500 major leaguers, it's exciting to see those that we saw just a couple of years ago. Vice President of Player Personnel David Ronsley will join us and help us do just that. We're also going to get to know a very talented young man who's a 23, so he's got a couple of years till he thinks about the draft, his journey into college. You'll love the story of Antonio Anderson and his family ties that are very deep into the game and also a strong presence with an African-American heritage as well. And finally, Josh Burns will join us, the Los Angeles Dodgers Senior Vice President, a longtime scout, certainly came up through the scouting ranks, and a guy who has run the Diamondbacks, he has run the Padres, he helped run the Rockies, and he's got a ring from the Boston Red Sox. Excited to talk the future of baseball with Josh Burns. Let's get it going with David Ronsley. He is kind of the eyes and brains of perfect game and has been for a long, long time, a 30-year scout. David, there are brand new PG alum or talented high school and college players that are getting ready to break through in 2021. Um, I'll let you start. American or National League, where do you want to start? Well, I'm going to start with the American League, Darren, and thanks for having me on. But first of all, a quick note. We missed all this in 2020 by the nature of the season, the short and big league season, and no minor league baseball. So a lot of these players are coming in with less than the track record that you would expect, and it's going to be exciting to see how they develop. And I'm going to start with a perfect example of that in the Seattle Mariners and the AL West, Jared Kelnick. Kelnick, a perfect game All-American. He's gotten famous because he was traded in that fateful Mets to Mariners deal two years ago. But what's forgotten is that he dominated double A as a 19 year old in 2019 and then didn't get to play last year. If the Mariners let him into the starting lineup at any point this year, he could be a favorite for the American League Rookie of the Year. He is that talented. I'm going to vary off the perfect game track a bit for the American League East and talk about the top prospect in baseball, Wander Franco with the Tampa Bay Rays. He is still 19 years old. He has been the top prospect in baseball for two years. He could be like the Ronald Acuna of this year. He could be going back a decade, the Michael Trout, when he got to the big leagues at 19. So somebody I will be watching very carefully what the Rays do with Wander Franco and how he debuts. And finally, going out to the American League Central, again, one player, a former perfect game All-American, Tristan McKenzie, 6'5", 165 still. All the sports writers are saying, hey, watch out when he grows. I got news for you. He's always going to be 6'5", 165. He was the same when he was 16, 17 years old. But his debut with Cleveland was so dynamic last year. I don't think people fully appreciate the dominance. And obviously with a young club like Cleveland, he's going to play a huge role in their potential success. He's a fun guy. Great kid, as you and I both know. Uh, National League, Ian Anderson, Perfect game All-American, right? Love him. But you want to take it a little bit deeper for the Atlanta Braves starting in the National League East. You want to go Anderson plus his party group, right? Yeah, Anderson obviously is a focal point with how well he threw not only in his six big league starts, but in his four playoff starts that really carried the Braves. Yes, Anderson has started to break through, but Tookie Toussaint, Kyle Wright, Tucker Davidson, Kyle Mueller, Bryce Wilson. And this is a deep pool of young pitchers with huge talent like Ian Anderson who just haven't succeeded to his level yet. And one or two of those guys at least I think is going to click in 2021 for the Braves. Brian Hayes is all kinds of fun. And when we got to know Charlie Hayes' son, he was a kid. He's not a kid anymore. He's uh, a guy that's on your list with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Back then, he was a Tennessee commit. What do you love about Cabrian? Well, Cabrian has always been about playing right, just like his father. He's probably the most influenced by his father, present big leaguer, son of, that I've ever seen. And he was arguably the best rookie in baseball for 24 games last year. He was hit 376. He was on pace to hit 40 home runs, win a gold glove. He doesn't need that this year to be an all-star. And also with the Pirates, I'm going to mention one more name. 
Uh, Mitch Keller from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. He's flashed it the last two years in his big league appearances. Maybe 2021 is when he puts it all together because the talent's there for Mitch Keller. So breakthrough National League West, it's not the team that got all the headlines this winter, although they got a lot before the Dodgers jumped in. But you want to talk about the babies down south, down I-5. You know, the Padres didn't get any attention. I know, I know, I know. Now, it's garbage. And like recency bias, right? Recency bias. Recency they, bias, <laughs> yes. But but it can be argued those those those, uh, those trades force the Dodgers to do their ultimate trade. But the guy I'm watching in San Diego is one who – I it kind of makes you uncomfortable. All, the, all those pitchers the Padres brought in because Mackenzie Gore is the best pitching prospect in minor league baseball. He's only 21, I believe, still. He was a first-round draft pick, what, four years ago out of North Carolina. Just superb. And he's the kind of guy you can expect if they give him innings, he's going to perform right off the bat. He's that talented, Mackenzie Gore. Another perfect game, former perfect game All-American. So I love your notebook and your mind and the vault that is you and the players that you've seen. There are some huge names. We just talked about one of them that changed teams. I want to throw three or four names at you and take me back to back then and bring me to kind of who they are now, just briefly, if you don't mind. Nolan Arenado is no longer a Rocky. This is a guy that had fun the, uh, last year and said, hey, tell Jerry I wasn't a PG All-American. Of course, founder and president Jerry Ford, as he welcomed those to the All-American Classic on camera. Arenado makes the move. He's now a Cardinal. What do you remember about the young man from Southern California? Well, Nolan Arenado played third base and batted cleanup for the ABD Bulldogs, which was, was you know, the, the best travel team in 2008, 2009, 2010. I think Arenado hit third. Number four hitter was a first baseman named Christian Yelich. <laughs> so who wasn't a perfect game All-American either? We, we fanned on that one. But my memory of Nolan Arenado is, in my opinion, I have it in my notes, I thought he was the best defensive player in that class, that 2009 class at third base. And when you say a third baseman is the best defensive player in the class, that's saying that he really stood out. He was that great at defense even back when he was 17, 18 years old. The super athleticism of George Springer. Who was he way back when up in the Northeast? Well, George Springer is a very talented player, went to a number of PG events. Uh, we weren't able to get him to the PG National uh, after his junior year, which I think would have really made him shine more. He played for Team Connecticut, and sometimes up in the Northeast, it's hard to see those players at the right time. But when he went to UConn, it was obvious he was going to be a superstar right away. I mean, what, his sophomore year, he had 18 home runs and stole 33 bases. So extremely talented athlete who's really played as a big leaguer, just like he played, you know, as a high schooler, especially at UConn. Francisco Lindor. Well, you know, Mr. Smile, he made me smile just thinking about him because he, he was that type of player. And one thing people would be surprised about, they think of Lindor, you know, he, he's not big. He's certainly 40 pounds heavier than he was back as a teenager. But who would have thought he was going to hit 30 plus home runs almost every year as a big leaguer? Well, if you'd watched him during high school and in travel ball, you would have thought that. Our first attention on him was when he was 14 years old and was hitting home runs as a freshman at the WWBA World Underclass in Fort Myers. And then he won the home run derby at the, the PG All-American Classic in what was that, 2010. So he's been showing this power as a switch hitter from both sides since he was literally 14 years old. We've all marveled this winter, David, how Trevor Bauer has controlled his destiny. From your perspective, that's nothing new. Oh, ab absolutely so, Darren. Very few people actually saw Trevor Bauer pitch in high school because he only went to high school for three years. After his junior year, he decided, hey, I'm gonna control my destiny. UCLA was willing to take him on, and he went and pitched as a freshman at a high school senior age at UCLA. So even back then, Trevor Bauer was making his own rules, marching to his own beat, and was successful doing it. This is fresh stuff, David. Thank you, my friend. Look forward to seeing you on the, in the color analyst chair at the Perfect Game High School Showdown here real soon. Well, I'll definitely look forward to that, Darren. Thank you. Outstanding stuff from David Ronzi. And when you think about Trevor Bauer and dive into the numbers just a little bit with the G-Form advanced metrics, look, that K rate, it, you would think that's been going on all along. That's plus 11 from his career number. That's plus 15 from the league average. He expected ERA, outstanding. That's number one amongst all starting pitchers. The rest of the top 10 in that group were relievers. Same thing with expected batting average and expected weighted on base average as well. Incredible stuff 
for Trevor Bauer. A little dive thanks to G-Form into the advanced metrics. We'll get to know a talented 23 Antonio Anderson, and we'll talk with the senior vice president of the Los Angeles Dodgers, Josh Burns. How in the world did they put that Bauer deal together and why? And I want to talk to him about the draft this year. How did they pull five players in, make those selections? That's the amateur angle. This is the only show devoted to amateur baseball. My name is Darren Sutton. Glad to have you hanging out with us on Perfect Game Weekly. You can tell right away if it's going to be a good glove or not. Uh, broken and good, so. When it breaks in nice, you want to use it for years. And I got the gold on it now. If you're into it mentally, you're getting your pre-pitch routine. The defense doesn't slump. It doesn't come and go like offense. If you lock it in mentally, it's going to be there. Well, we're glad you're hanging out with us for Perfect Game Weekly. Let's take a peek at the Yeti built for the wild travel team rankings. Team Orlando out of Winter Garden, Florida. Love Tate South of Scene, who is with that GBG team out of Tumball, Texas, the Banditos. More on the East Cobb Astros in just a moment. Remember Jax Bishop and Ethan Murray, two great names. Team elite out of Winder, Georgia. The Gulf Coast Monarchs. Carter Smith, special player, middle infielder. Laguna Niguel, California, the home of BPA and baseball family. Jared Sable, whose brother, Blake, plays in the Pirates organization. TBT Ballers, Boca Raton, Florida. MVP Hustle in California. Travis Friends on that team. So is Paul Dominguez Walker. They're out of La Mirada, California. And I like Everett Johnson, a 25. Love getting to know the young man out of North Carolina on that Canes national team. So we shared a little bit about the East Cobb Astros. It's a travel ball name that you just put on your shelf and you know it very, very well. But they challenge their athletes. It's an earned privilege to wear that uniform. And when you think about Antonio Anderson, the 14U Select Festival Most Valuable Player, a very talented 2023 you think about who he is as an athlete. You think about his family with Antonio and Lydia, his mom and dad. But with regard to those East Cobb Astros, they pushed him. He did all that he did at the 14U age group, but they brought him to the 17U World Wood Bat Association World Championship, usually known as Jupiter, in Fort Myers, Florida. And he was all tournament, and he got even better. We recently had a great quick back-and-forth conversation with a very talented young man out of Georgia, Antonio Anderson. Oh, well, I'm Antonio Anderson. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. MVP of the Super 25 National Championship. Congratulations. A big round of applause for Antonio, the winner of the Augusta Impact Award. Well, I was at home getting back from training, and I just looked at my phone, and my dad told me he had an email from Perfect Game. And we just read it, and we saw that I made the 14 Youth Select Festival. And we all just got very happy and jumped up. It was a very great experience. We just saw Anderson win that award. It's he plays for the East Cobb program. He's a legitimate switch hitter. Hot shot, base hit, right field for the non-committed athlete. One run will score. So kind of give me from your, your eyes, your perspective, what it's like to get into that game, but also to perform, to be holding that MVP trophy. What was it like? Um, it means a lot. Not too many people win the MVP trophy, and I was fortunate enough to have my skill set and to win the trophy. And I was just very fortunate, and it was a blessing. How good does that ice bath feel? Um, it feels good. I want to thank everyone that got me here, my trainers, my coaches. It's just a blessing to be here. What part of your game are you most proud of? Um, my hitting. I really developed and switch hitting. I really just started hitting in the game, switch hitting couple years ago and it just developed over the years. All right, so I need to know the story of the relationship with Jackie Robinson. Yeah, well, um, I went to LA one day and we had a little baby shower and I went, it was a, a Dodger baby shower and it was just, I sat down with my great grandpa and he just talked to me about how it was related to Jackie Robinson and he went deep into it. It was just, it was crazy. What has Jackie's legacy meant to you? It means a lot to me. Um, I'm walking in his footsteps, and 
His family and my family told a lot about him, and I read a lot about him. He's just a great person on and off the field. Who is he as a pitcher, Jeremy? It's kind of just a continuation of what he is as a shortstop, as a bat, and that it's refined, it's smooth, it's methodical, but yet it still stands out. He's going to be mid-80s, he's got a feel, he fills the strike zone. Again, he's a two-way. Throwing a changeup like that up to 88, still 14U eligible. It's just a tough pitch to hit. Yeah, that's, that's a really good pitch. And it's easy to throw out, oh, he's a two-way, but what goes on behind the scenes, having to do your infield work, having to run your poles as a pitcher, having to do BP, you have to do twice as much work. No doubt, because being a one-way player is hard. In 2021, what, what do you hope happens? Um, I hope to make a decision on my commitment, but I'm taking my time. And if it's not 2021, well, it might be 2022, but I'm taking my time on my commitment and still working my craft. So who is Antonio Anderson's when you throw some numbers on him? He can fly, certainly, out of the gates, and you can expect that speed to pick up. But if you're a shortstop, that's fine. And otherwise, you're 100th percentile with just about everything. A very gifted player. I've got to go casual with you, by the way. He makes it clear on all of his questionnaires that he likes the nickname Tone Loke. Tone Loke, I think we'll just leave that there for the talented Antonio Anderson, who, by the way, not only was the Select Festival MVP, he won two other Most Valuable Player awards in a COVID year of 2020 at PG events. And as we talked about earlier, we're excited to be joined by the Dodgers Senior Vice President of Baseball Operations, Josh Burns, who spends time with us now. I guess, Josh, right away, first of all, congratulations. Congratulations on what you guys pulled together last year in a very challenging year for having the right roster makeup. Um, you know, you had your hands in a lot of that, but uh, really congratulations on what you pulled together. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a different year, um, a special achievement because of the kind of year it was. And then, you know, we'd had a lot of success, but um, 1988 was a constant reminder that, that uh, the Dodgers hadn't, hadn't won the World Series in 32 years. So, uh, you know, a lot of excitement, a lot of years building up to that and, and for some of our people a lot of relief that um, winning the world series was sort of uh, a missing piece on the resume so it was it was a great thing for all of us how unique of a player is trevor bauer not only to sign it's a unique structure to the deal but what do you remember about the first time you ever laid eyes on him or heard about him and kind of scouted him if you take me back to then when he's at hard high school yeah i kind of saw him at hard high school by accident uh, i think i was there to see mike uh Montgomery and uh you know this this smaller guy came in at the end throwing hard and um you know then he early enrolled at UCLA and and obviously became a, a top prospect there and then was not going to get towards our pick when it was his draft year but it, it was interesting in that time frame obviously a, a lot of what he believed in training methods drive line principles technology long toss etc he was ahead of his time so he was trying to state that as a draft prospect and put some things in writing you know as if he was interviewing clubs as much as trying to get drafted high and so i'll give him credit i mean i think at that stage of his career what he was doing was met with a lot of resistance and he kept going he believed in it and he believed it helped turn him from that guy from Hart high school into third pick golden spikes etc uh, and obviously uh, a very successful major league career you know, when he's around uh, Clayton Kershaw, David Price, Walker Bueller, guys like that, I, I think uh, I think it'll be good because I think that's that's really I mean, as much as, you know, we have a lot of beliefs in, in how we pitch and every guy's an individual, we certainly don't have all the answers. So um, I think Trevor will probably inject some new thoughts and ideas uh, into what we do. And, um, you know, the bottom line is wanting to be great and, and enjoying the competition. And we know he's, he's got all that. When you win, Josh, you're picking 29th or you're picking 30th. You're not picking first through fifth. How do you balance that? How, how important is Billy Gasparino, your leads, you know, your director of scouting and the scouts, while still having the finances to make the move you made on Bauer? This, to me, puts even more of a hyper focus in the importance on really having a good trust in your scouts and the way you go about your business. Yeah, I mean, Billy Gasparino is fantastic, and, and, and we put together a, a really, really good staff of scouts. And I think uh, in some ways the game's change. I think we rely on our scouts as much as anyone. We go to great lengths to sort of how we weigh opinions, how we hire, how we uh, debate within the staff. 
So in that respect, I think that's the first part of any organization. How good are your scouts and your scouting principles and your discussion? And I think we're, you know, this is my seventh year with the Dodgers. I'm really happy with, with where we are. I think our guys like have high level eyes and discussions and, and how to get to know the players and help us make decisions. Um, and then marrying that with, you know, the Dodgers history and our revenue, um, you know, Stan Caston, I think with his success in Atlanta and Washington, I think, you know, has strong beliefs on scouting and development being, you know, the determining factor on sustaining success. So as we've gone, um, we've kind of done everything. We've, we've clearly been willing to use our own players in the big leagues. I think, um, you know, all of our playoff starts last year were by homegrown starters. And, you know, we have, our roster has generally gotten younger year by year. Um, we've made trades. Um, so we have gone out and gotten you Darvish and Manny Machado and we spent money. So um, I think that's how we tried to approach it, but, but never really compromising uh, on the scouting development principles um, and that that is uh, our identity. It's how we sustain success. And, um, and, I, and I hope it continues uh, for a long time. Yeah. You know, it's for those that watch this, it's fun for you to hear, you know, to hear you say that because you know, when you're on an amateur amateur show and you're talking about that, it, it's exciting for the athletes to hear that someone like the Dodgers is still thinking about them, the prospects, and that the, they is the future of the game. With that in mind, speak on behalf of Billy, if you don't mind, as, as one of his leaders. Um, and I'd like to drop you right into the middle of that draft, which was so unique last year, just the five-round draft. And I'm intrigued by high schooler Jake Vogel, not far down the line from you guys, obviously, right down the freeway at Huntington Beach High School. Yeah, the local aspect might have helped a little bit, but um, we knew about him. And then out here, uh, there's so much going on in the fall and winter, even games. So even on an abbreviated schedule, we saw a lot of games and we saw him play against and with a lot of good players. So it, it didn't feel as incomplete. Uh, I mean, obviously, a lot of the high school players in last year's draft, the cold weather guys never even really got into game situations. Um, but uh, with, with Jake, uh, we saw a lot of games. Uh, up until the middle of March when things shut down. So um, obviously a great athlete, um, can really run, can really throw, has more power than you'd think with his size. And, and we just felt like there was a little bit of swing cleanup to be done. Um, and, you know, for him, it was a strange summer. He was sort of in and out of our USC program, which was where we had our, our satellite group. Um, so when he was there, he's facing guys who were uh, you know, much more, much older and much more experienced than he was. And then roll into instructional league and facing uh, some good arms there. So, uh, but it was, it was good to get tested like that. And, and from a development perspective, I think it might have, you know, even sped things up as we really try to like work with a swing and try to build a hitter with a, you know, an 18 year old who obviously has, has uh, uh, high end athleticism and tools. I think it's unique, and I touched on this before, that someone who has that right on the front of their desk, the title senior vice president, as young people, we work towards that. But all you high school and college athletes understand this senior vice president is going to come watch you play. How much do you enjoy still seeing players, and what advice do you have for players? Big picture question, right? If you're, if you're, They're not going to know you're there. They're just not. You're going to sneak up on them. What are you looking at maybe before the game, during the game, after the game, outside of straight skill set? Yeah, I, I, that's, I mean, first of all, I love going to games, still do. Even now, I mean, um, you know, even uh, every day is a fun day. You're, you're at the, the, the field at the ballpark and, and you're trying to pick out good players. And, um, and I would say like in this era, uh, you know, I think in general, the players are more advanced. I mean, the, the, the teaching and the methods has sort of sped up the process. Um, I do think like we got to be careful, like it's not like a workout showcase culture that playing games and playing well in games matters if you're a pitcher you're not just a short burst velocity guy that you can pitch a little bit obviously velocity matters um you know if you're a, a position player it's not just sort of you know raw power exit velocity it's can you hit um and then i think there's you know the passion and effort and enthusiasm i think we all like to see and not everyone's wired that way um i mean some guys are play with their hair on fire. I mean, some guys like Corey Seager, like oh, just makes the game look slow in a good way. Um, so we do try to get to know the players as people very well. Uh, I think whether your personality or whether you're a high school or college, I think the passion for the game and, um, and how hard it is to get through the minors and to be a good major leaguer 
uh, is really important because we, you know, that's probably where the next sort of side of my life is like when these guys get into our system, um, you know, we don't baby them. We, we throw a lot at them. Uh, we explain sort of why we drafted them and, and, you know, it's, it's a major league outcome that we're chasing. So even for a, a teenager, even for Jake Vogel, um, you know, he's got to sort of shift his mindset to, um, you know, ultimately trying to be that kind of player. Thank you, Josh. We appreciate your insights. Again, congratulations and stay healthy this season. Okay, thanks for having me, Darren. Great insights from Josh Burns. And bottom line, you may see him at a PG event near you. And as we take a look ahead at the upcoming schedule, understand uh, I ran into Josh Burns last year at the high school showdown. That's coming up. It's a great gathering of talent, certainly. The National Indoor Showcase is a must-see if you're nearby or if you want to take part, certainly. Um, based on weather, but I'm looking ahead to the summer a little bit. West Palm Beach, that 13U National Showcase, has soon to be announced a 13U Select Festival, and the 14U National Showcase in Fort Myers, that 14U Select Festival, that roster, it's basically the younger brother of the Perfect Game All-American Classic. Certainly want to thank Antonio Anderson's family for taking part and sharing all the information they did about their talented 23 grand and their young son, David Ronsley, and his insights as he has been a leader in the scouting world for Perfect Game. And Josh Burns, one of the key executives with the Los Angeles Dodgers, the world champion Los Angeles Dodgers. But remember, even though he's a big guy on campus there at Dodger Stadium, he's getting on a plane and coming to see you play as well. My name is Darren Sutton. This is the only show devoted to amateur baseball. Thanks for hanging out. This has been Perfect Game Weekly.